Ladies and gentlemen, I stand here before you because I am the testimony of a young girl who've never been educated, who was trafficked when she was 13 years old from Senegal to Paris, never been to school, never had any education, never been schooled, I will say, and had extremely difficult childhood. The picture you see there is the only picture I've got with my twin brother, who lives in Germany today. That's the only picture we have. And the reason why I'm showing this picture, because this is the picture that we took from the orphanage in Senegal. Senegal is a very small country. Unfortunately, my mother abandoned us as twins, and we had extremely difficult childhood. And what I want to talk to you about today is about time, and how we can use time to collaborate as Africans, but also to think about the people we are serving. My background doesn't define me, and the fact I was neglected, trafficked, should not be a barrier in a very successful life. I'm Senegalese. I'm a British woman. I'm a coder. Above all, I'm a transformer. When I arrived in the UK, I was doing cleaning jobs, working in bars, in hotels, in restaurants, cooking for the elderly, doing all the odd jobs we all do when we arrive in the West. I learned how to code seven languages in two years at my local Starbucks, my local library, in the southeast of England, in a very, very cold place, where I was almost the only black woman at the Starbucks. Time is a very important thing. Time shows us evidence. Time creates data. Time. It is time for us Africans to work together. Coding is a 21st century skill, and every young girl growing up today in our society should have access to. And I believe technology is an enabler for young girls and young women in Africa. We cannot design solutions where we forget young girls and young women. AI will have a profound effect on the ways we design solutions. Coding will be replaced by literacy and numeracy. I know technology is an enabler. Because someone like me who never had an education, started reading and writing when she was 16 years old. Today I can sit in the UK, or I can sit in Mombasa, or I can sit simply in Buenos Aires, in Argentina with my computer, and code a website with Python, or Ruby, or Java, or C++. Our government have failed the education system. We have failed young women and young girls and boys around the world. Lifetime exclusion, no education. We must change this with time. We got 15 years before 2030. And my goal is to empower one million women and girls coders by 2030. I know I can teach, I can reach one million women and girls coders in 2030. I know that. And what I did, I went to the United Nations, I told them that the only way we can include people, especially young women and girls today in South Africa, in Senegal, in favelas in Brazil, in China, in Japan, is to include them. Technology has no gender, no bias. You don't have to be white or black or yellow to use technology. My girls are sitting down right now in Kampala coding. 
complex languages because they are human beings. Time is what we put in, how committed we are, what is the empathy, the compassion, and the kindness we put in the solution we design as people. Gender equality doesn't mean that women have to have power over men. It means that men need to get involved in the development of young girls and young women. We have feminists around the world, like Justin Trudeau, Paul Polman from Unilever, President Obama. All of these people are supporting today I Am The Code. This is a young girl called Leticia. She comes from slums in Uganda, Kampala. She's coding right now. She's using our computer kits, the first ever computer kit developed in the world. It's like Lego. They put it together, and they can see the content straight away. She codes and see the result. The coding is embedded, the first one in the world. If we're trying to empower people, if we're looking to put time and efforts in the development of people, if we think about the fourth industrial revolution, where we can include people, we need to think about people, product, processes, and policies. We need to include the marginalized communities. In South Africa, I call on you to decisively start including people in your tech sector. See Africa as a continent. South Africa is not Africa. Africa has got 54 countries, and we need your help to get the marginalized girls and women included in the tech sector. We look into South Africa. So we need to start thinking about people. And as you go home today or tomorrow, I want you to think about this. What sort of time I am putting into young women and girls around the world? Can I spare an hour or two to mentor a young woman and a young girl? Can I hire her? But impact will only happen if we Africans collaborate together, work together, and decide to measure and have a moonshot, decide that by 2030, we would like to empower one million women and girls coders. This could be two million, 10 million. But we can't work in silos anymore as Africans. We need to invest in young women and young girls. Let's give hope to people. There are millions of forgotten girls out there counting on us. Our young girls and young women around the world need opportunities, dreams, chances. They can't be just an object of development anymore. And this amazing platform that Shifo, Ian, and Dean have created for us, which I'm honored to be part of for the first time in South Africa, is the platform that will make this happen. Because we don't have anything else in Africa. That's why I'm honored to be here, to travel, to come and see you all, to share my vision with you, for you to invest in young women and young girls across the world. It is important we do this as a society. It's a moral imperative. We need to look into our values and how do we do this. And I hope next year, as we organize another events like this, we have at least 10,000, 20,000, 40, 50,000 girls into coding. Thank you so much. Thank you.